The UAP Independent Study was commissioned to create a roadmap on how to use the tools of science to evaluate and categorize the nature of UAPs going forward. This roadmap, of course, will help the federal government obtain usable data to explain the nature of future UAPs. Um, we don't release anything until it's really perfect. I mean, we have quick look data that is marked as quick look data. Um, so, you know, you can use it to get preliminary um, findings, but wait for the, the really nicely cleaned up data. So uh, uh, a lot of rigorous um, protocol in putting out our data to make sure it is perfect. Before I begin, though, I really do want to double down on Dan's words, that it is really disheartening to hear of the harassment that our panelists have faced online, all because they're studying this topic. NASA stands behind our panelists, and we do not tolerate abuse. Harassment only leads to further stigmatization of the UAP field, significantly hindering the scientific progress and discouraging others to study this important subject matter. This is an example of one that I showed at the hearing recently. Uh, this is a spherical orb, metallic, in the Middle East, 2022, by an MQ-9. I will come back to the sensor question that David raised here in a moment. This is a typical example of the thing that we see most of. We see these all over the world, and we see these in, in making very interesting apparent maneuvers. Another challenge in this area is what we call stigma. There's a real stigma among people reporting events. And despite NASA's extensive efforts to reduce the stigma, the origin of the UAPs remain unclear, and we feel many events remain unreported. Commercial pilots, for example, are very reluctant to report anomalies, and one of our goals in having NASA play a role is to remove stigma and get high-quality data. 